Nature's all right. Well, uh oh, uh, Razor played sorry, KP played this Razor into Nature's profit matchup, and it's... did he get uh sprouteasied a bunch or oh. what was the situation? Honestly, he had a no, oh, his game was atrocious, so it didn't even matter about the, the game matchup, it was more just a lane matchup. So, Nature's Prophet has a great time versus the Razor. You're able to easily out CS him, Razor can't deal with the summons at all. So this is... You could just put more points into the plasma field though, right? I, I know it doesn't do a great job at dealing with them, but it's manageable, but it doesn't feel good, you know? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, you, this isn't... You don't pick Razor for the plasma field, is what I'm saying. So... Let's see what the call is going to be now from Fnatic. Naga will come out. It's a pretty good Naga game. Is indeed. Probably just means the Nature's Prophet needs to rush into something like that Gleepnir. Not only going to be effective against the Razor, just locking him in place, but also the Marana, also all of those Naga Siren illusions. Uh, yeah. Who was the team that ran Tiny as the three? I feel like we've seen it once so far, haven't we? I haven't, I haven't seen it. I, I'm mm. so it could have been another game. Possible, possible. I, I'm just thinking, like, is there any way that you can go one of the big Naga Sar encounters now? Because it's most likely going to be the um, the off lane that's still yet to come. So, is it going to be a Dazzle? Is it going to be a Lion? Probably not. Is it going to be a Pudge? Probably not as well, just because you have a hard time against the the Razor. You, he's just Fanatics taken all of your um your damage away. Not that Pudge relies on the damage, but it just it, it's a free soak for him. Can't really catch the Marana. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what little gun I'm gonna go for here with this last pick overall. The Shrak probably would have been a pretty decent one to be able to sit up with. They might even just do profit off lane as well. It's something that uh, Eleven does a little bit. Ten seconds remaining. If they do consider about pushing the profit to the Five three, is there a carry that could have a decent time to be able to deal with the Naga. I mean, you've got to keep in mind that Razor lane could then be a bit more tricky. Hmm. Seems like they're prioritizing the, the Nature's Prophet as being the one, just with the Puck and the Storm Spirit being banned out, right? But they're just saying, look, let's just get rid of the big counters. Timbersaw, okay. Good movement speed, uh, good AoE damage. Even Chakram's still persisting through the Song of the Siren can sometimes catch the Naga Siren off guard. Lacking a little bit of magic damage, would you say? Yeah, I'd, I'd say a decent amount. It's a pretty good timber game. Yeah, it's a pretty good timber game. Remaining. Trying to see how they want to respond now. Five seconds remaining. Uh, you uh, can you OD OD Marana? A little bit of synergy there. It gives you kill potential versus a timber saw, which is what I'm looking at. But I think that cores might have a little bit of difficulty in regards to the synergy together. I'm just I'm trying to find a way to pigeonhole Zeus into a draft constantly. Mm. Which is I this the one? Has a lot of value versus Arc Warden. Uh no issue versus Cogs, right? You get out of it with the leap, so mm -hmm. it's it's not a bad game. I, I yeah, I could definitely see some value coming out with the Zeus. Yeah. The 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 Cogs doesn't give you an issue. It's just the timing of the battery assault. You need to make sure that you're using the heavenly jump at like the right interval, otherwise you just stay in place basically. So, uh, even just against the Sprout, right? Good way to be able to get out of that. Magic damage against the Timber. Decent way to deal with the Arc Warden. My worry is that it's a little... Like, there's no one to make plays for you, really, if that's the, the way you're going down. Quap of Pain instead, huh? <laughs> I know what I said. Uh, I mean, it's just an RML specialty as well, right? Yeah, I feel good. like so many things are RML specialties, though. No, this hero is very hit or miss. Uh, this is not a free quap game as well, like you were mentioning. There's going to be double Gleepnir. Both supports can have a way to initiate. Uh, it's a very fine line that Armel needs to play. If you get off to a good start, then you could potentially snowball. You, you have to, exactly right. Queen of Pain, if you don't get off to a good start, honestly, there's a hero that has a death quota. Like, if you go over those deaths, over four deaths, you... Like, this is not an impactful Queen of Pain, so... The only situation where that's okay is if Gabby is just farming like a beast the entire time, right? Because it's still a really good Naga Siren game, but it's a really good Nature's Prophet game. It's a really good Timbersaw game. It's pretty decent Arc Warden game. And I hate Earthshaker. So 
You know, it's uh, anything could work. I'm probably leaning just purely on draft more towards the little gun side, but okay, you know, Nagasaran is kind of a busted hero right now, and they have no direct counters to it. So, uh, I like, think Gabby could definitely take it. It would definitely need to be. I I don't want to say like a shining moment for him. But he hasn't really been that one to put the team on his back and say, I'm the one that carried that game in quite some time. Yeah, still trying to get that form going for Gabby. And hopefully this is a game where he can get that momentum starting. Like you said, it's a pretty good Nagi game. I feel like the only real counter is the timber. But if you're going into one person... And really the big thing this game is the fact that you don't have supports that are able to, to deal with the Nargis Iron Illusions. And until you get Gleipnir, you will not as well. So you're going to have really big issues in regards to the lanes and how you can kind of address that, which could really free up the map for Fnatic to make some space for KP to get that farm on the Razor or make some space for the rotations out of the Queen of Pain, looking to get kills on the side lanes and you know, even trying to sit up as well for DJ to, to play around with all the Marana for the arrow. So... We'll see. Look, Eleven is a grand master Timbersaw. I, I, I believe, in fact, he has played it so far through the group stages. I, ha I did cast a Timber game. I can't remember if it was Eleven or not. I believe it was, but we'll see. I, I, I think we're in store for a pretty good game. We do have a very interesting draw from either side, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people still want to pick this damn Earthshaker, man, and I'm not convinced. So oh, I said DJ just... Earthshaker. Is that, is like his... Nah... Even then, oh no, DJ! What are you? Just... I have a ton of faith in DJ. I just have even. I know, I know. Like, comparably worse faith in Earthshaker. I really don't rate the hero. Looks like they'll be able to get the D ward off. Let's take number one from the Earthshaker. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the lane is set up to be pretty good, right? Like you, you have none of these <laughs> clockwork can't do clockwork things in this lane because you're just going to get blocked off. You're going to get static linked, and then your life's pretty damn miserable. Probably not going to have enough damage to die super early on, just because you know level one static links kind of garbage. You need the uh, the plasma field to be able to secure the range creep, and Nature's Prophet's going to be farming all the while. So uh, if Sec can just make sure he doesn't die in this lane. I think he's going to be fairly happy because you are a great counter to that Earthshaker once it gets into the later stages. You don't think even the lane as well that the, the Earthshaker is going to have difficulties in? Oh, he's going to have some, but like I was saying before, you go in onto the Earthshaker and then you just get static links. You're never going to static link the Nature's Prophet or have the opportunity to, unless he's really out of position with a Fisher. Even then, you can just TP out, right? So you need to make sure that you're punishing the clockwork when he's making the aggressive move onto you. Well, let's see. Four, two, three, and I'll melt as the creeps connect to the mid lane for the first time in this last series. We'll see how this matchup is going to shape up. Of course, two heroes that Queen of Pain hasn't really been in the meta for quite some time. And the Ark Warden, four, two, three, very comfortable on it. But do we feel like he's going to have an okay time mid versus the quad? I'll be honest, I don't know if I've ever seen this match before, <laughs> so I have no idea how this one's going to turn out. I I'm just going to be watching very keenly. Amal's gone for first point in, in the scream, so just having a way to at least be able to secure some creeps early on. I wonder if he's going to continue down this trend or start to max out the dagger now. Uh, I'd say the dagger is pretty important, right? Like, again, you need to remember the role of the Queen of Pain this game. It's just to create space for that Naga Siren. So how are you going to do that? Win your lane. Just look to dominate it in that way and uh, prevent the Arc Warden from getting off to too strong of a start, being able to make his rotations and potentially kill the Naga. Again, remember, you're playing with the Nature's Prophet, right? Every single kill attempt has a plus one potential. Dyer's current has been killed. What are how they're going to look to try and play the bottom lane in regards to, to Lil Gun? Like when they're going to consider about moving Ace out of this lane? Because I think very soon it's going to be free for 11. Probably level 4 and 11 can play this solo, I, I believe. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, th there's not really much that Jao can do around the map though, right? It's basically only top Fisher into an arrow and... You know, maybe you get a static link off onto a clockwork, but that's three heroes committing onto a clockwork, so I'm not sure if that's really going to be worthwhile Anyone either. Anyone might be dead. Oh, okay. Didn't go for the other one. Yeah. Um, 
I was thinking maybe this is the sort of game where Zhao can afford to play a little greedier. You know, go into the jungle, start to build up some stacks for the Naga, even just taking a few of them with the state Sacred Arrow, being in position to block off ganks onto the Naga, make sure that you're uh, arrowing the, the siege creeps, just things like that to be able to build up your own farm as well as slow down the pace that Little Gun are going to be bringing at you. Yeah, well, they might need him to play a greedy game, right? Like, they don't have a Spirit Vessel builder, so if you can get a little bit of farm and get that vessel out, maybe that's a way you can look to address the Timbersaw. Yeah, possibly. Even just against someone like the, the Tiny, right? You get that onto him, then... The, uh, the Blink Dagger, once it does eventually come out for Ace, isn't going to be able to be used in the middle of team fights. You're just going to have that constant ticking. Take a look at how the other lane side, the other side lane, I should say, is shaping up at the moment. KP 14 and 2 compared to the 15 and 7. So a couple denies advantage for Trill at the moment. He's going to go Treads and has a Midas queued up as well. So we. I think this was... Yeah, Mamung died. Not Mamung died. I don't know why I keep saying Mamung died. In your dream went the, the Midas route, but we haven't seen Palos go for that when he's playing the Nature's Prophet. This is Alan's. Let's have a think of why. Like, what specifically is going to be ideal to have this game? I suppose just feeling like he might be playing a little bit more aggressively in some of these team fights, And so if he's going to be joining, then he might be... Uh, falling a little bit further behind in terms of his experience and so Midas is a way to kind of remedy that just make sure that you're able to get that uh, net worth and experience passively while still joining in onto as many team fights as possible you can see rushing into the maelstrom as is pretty standard but especially this game nicely done for ready they will be able to secure both the water runes so Armel gets a refill and 423 won't be able to find his own refill so Playing with the greatest amount of men at the lane. We're going to try and get rid of this sentry that they had blocking up the, the hard camp as well. On the bottom side of the map, Jao just... Uh, you've almost reached this stage on the Timbersaw. It's like, well, what, what are we supposed to do against this now? Sure, it's magical damage that the Riptide is uh, is putting in onto the Timbersaw. Oh, oh, arrow, though. Mm -hmm. You should be fine for now. I mean, if you're not getting kills at this stage, then it's just going to get worse and worse. Maybe if you get into something like a Diffusal Blade on the Nagasar and go a little bit of a different, uh, go down a little bit of a different route, just drain the Timbersaw's mana and then look to ignore him in the team fights. Because they don't have that super easy illusion clearer. No, they really. Lack of mana. Uh, is he in trouble? Yeah, I think he is. Stamina to the arrow, Star Storm level 2. A little bit more damage required to kill off 11. He's just able to limp away. 17 one charges though, so has to be a little bit careful here, although Gabby can okay. toss back <laughs> underneath the tower. Luckily enough, he's got the uh, the illusions to soak up a few of those tower hits. I still think they can make this attempt. I mean, you've got the ensnare available. Ooh, that's you a big don't courier. have that courier, like, they can kill it for sure. Yeah, look at the positioning by 11. He knows that they're going for this wraparound and... Ooh, will it be online? Oh. It's like it is. Genuel should be able to close the distance for the Star Storm. And this time, 11 will go down as First Blood is picked up. Now, it will come at a cost of them being able to secure the power runes. Armel oh. is not even going to spawn bottom. So, unfortunately for them, no DD in the hands of the Queen of Pain, who does have the Sonic Wave at the ready. So, you'd love... He hasn't put a skill point in it just yet, but... I mean, this is... Early on, pretty much a guaranteed kill for the Queen of Pain. So you'd love to get that one on cooldown early. Yeah, I think what you just want to see is the Tiny make a, a movement back towards bottom. I think Jao could potentially look to set up some kind of vision around where the Tiny could be patrolling. And then as soon as you see Ark Warden on his own, that's when you really want to be going for these uh, these kill attempts. But he is a little low on mana, I suppose, on the Quop. So I think even uh, a rotation through from DJ, for example, probably wouldn't be enough to take the kill. <laughs> I think even uh, another play potential could be like Armel shoves out this next wave. Could be a bit difficult. One, one point scream. You look to go back to base, refill your your resources, then TP bottom and get the kill in the timber. Because you definitely can with that sonic wave damage. So you kill him again, all of a sudden he's going to have to make the walk of shame back. So I think there's a couple avenues that Armel could, could look to play with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Gabby immediately shoves the lane into the tower. It's the Siege Creep wave as well, so Levin's going to need to deal with this one. So 
Make sure that he's not giving up too much of the map for free. They actually do make that rotation through with Zhao and DJ, but it's going to be scouted out by the Observer Wards, so even though he hasn't skilled up the Sonic Wave just yet on Armel, they probably won't be able to secure this kill. Good defensive positioning by 423. They have to know that this is here. Observer Ward placed just out of range, so nicely done there by 423. Ace he is needed good. a little win though, didn't he? He's uh, he's suffering in the laning stage. <clears throat> Pretty standard against the Queen of Pain, but Armel's doing exactly what they picked this Quap to do. Yep. Slow the game down, give space for Nagasar. This is just forcing a, everyone to kind of play around mid as Armel blink away, but Ace was ready. Says in a great position as well to be able to close the distance, but look at the rotation out of KP and the arrow from Daniel. Well, on point onto Ace's tiny. So in the end, Fnatic will be able to find two kills thanks to KP's rotation. Oh, Eleven got a solo kill. All right. Well, that's a good way to come back from giving up that first blood. And also in the meantime, Trill is using this time spent by KP rotating down towards the bottom side of the map to just say, you know what, I'm going to take off half of your tower's HP. Why not? I'm an Aegis Prophet. I got my treants. Daniel Welsh, yeah, should be, be fine. fine. He's creating a ton of space by doing this. Anytime that Naga's <laughs> oh, clever play. One more leave. That's the last one. Isn't able to dodge the ulti and 11. Should be able to close the distance. Abilities coming up in a couple of seconds. Like you said, this is a lot of space. So bottom lane completely shoved in. So it's going to be forced to TP back so he doesn't miss the creeps. I mean, I think you're very happy about that for Jao, though. Like, you, you've just moved him all the way. Forced the TP out. Maybe this is what they needed to make an aggressive play up on the top side of the map. Armel, it's not going to be anything secret, considering he's farming a creep, creep wave right now, but you know that there's not going to have any kind of save attempt if they do make an aggressive move here onto Trill. Be great timing to get the, the kill onto the Nature's Prophet. This is Midas now coming out on the Corio. Yeah, they get the Shadow Strike off, but DJ just not quite in position. Seems like he wants to get Radiant's the pull off and tower. slow the game down further. And I, I know I mentioned before that that's very important. When you've got a Naga Siren, you got to make sure that Gabby's enabled to farm as much as possible. But you're potentially going up against an Arc Warden and effectively three Midas's when you consider the Tempest Double. So you can delay the game, but it comes to an extent where if you've got an opportunity, you've got to take it. And I feel like they've just missed a big one with, you know, the 11 uh, TP still being on cooldown and not actually Again. having. I'm all aggressive jump on a Trill. He's actually going to look to try and stand his ground, but a great fissure from DJ puts Se off to the right side. And in the end, that will result in a kill for Fnatic and continuing to slow down this Nature's Prophet's game. Only a little bit, of course, stalling it out considering his top of the net worth, but... Very important for them to slow it down ever so slightly. Mid lane, no KP. He's going to be in some trouble. Let's see if he's taking off of the raindrops. And Ace actually doesn't look for the toss back. So Armel is going to be able to pick that one up. Trill also did a good job, even though he died on the top side of the map. Just using the treants to be able to influence the, uh, the creeps in the lane. No hits onto the tower sustained as a result of that death. Just keeping them away as much as possible, even securing the last hits while he was dead. So, despite really good Fisher, like we were saying before, from DJ, still doesn't result in that much of a gain coming through from Fnatic. So overall, though, who do we feel like happier with kind of the status quo of the game we have at the moment? Kills are even, gold's incredibly even as well. I mean, only... What, 400 gold away from the Midas on 423? He is last on the core net worth right now, but that can change very quickly once you've got that Tempest Double Midas available. And I mean, even when you're looking to go into pushing these towers, it's going to need to be a commitment through from the Naga Siren eventually because you're going to have that magnetic field. So Razor, Quop, you know, even the Marana and the Siege Creeps to a lesser extent aren't going to be able to do jack. Actually making an attempt here with 423, making a rotation. Trying to get a kill, Dyer's connecting through with Ser and that hook shot freshly picked up. The spy out KP. Oh no, the creeps blocks the hook angle. DJ's gonna hold the fissure to the last second. Armor will TP in as well. 
It will be able to secure with a kill, but 423 wants some revenge and we'll find it with ease. The Tempest double. Helping out with the spam of the Spark Wraith. Gets him his Midas, so it's a one for one. And courses a couple of TPs as well through from Fnatic, so. Oh, just the one actually. Armel was in the vicinity anyway. But I think you're generally happy with this if you don't take too much damage into this top tower. That's going to be the big mm, tipping point for mine. Are they just going to give this one up for free? Are they going to make Clockwork move up top to try and stall it out if, at all if possible? Doesn't seem like it. They're wanting to put a little bit more emphasis onto that mid lane. So, might has picked up. Got a couple of usages out of it now for Trill. Nearly getting into his third. Tempest double, of course. Gonna get even more value out of this one. So, big question is, is Gabby farming enough to make this worthwhile? As for right now, the answer would have to be no. No, Sitting he's basically not. basically last on net worth in terms of the cores after a great laning stage coming through from Eleven's Timbersaw. Dude, he's, that first blood. he's so farmed. He's so goddamn farmed on Eleven. This is a game where I... I'm pretty worried they can't kill him. Mm -hmm. it, it, That's why I wanted the Zeus, man. Sustained magic damage. Cop is very burst. And she's in trouble as well. Cog's pushed back for the max amount of control. Armel's going to try and move them away with a Sonic Wave, but Trill will TP in. I believe he even considered about a TP out from Armel, but cancel that instantly, recognizing he wasn't going to be able to make it. So they get the kill, and his teleport is now on cooldown. Yeah, a little uncharacteristic mistake there from Armel. I mean, he's by, by far the most consistent member of this team other than DJ. And, I mean, there was a battery assault running and he just tried to TP in front of a clockwork. Very, very odd. Top lane, DJ. Try and get this. Yeah, this return kill will be huge. Echo Slam at the ready. Wants to wait for the creep wave. Oh, but Trill. Oh, no. Oh, he got him. Oh, no, he didn't no, he get him. His team. It's always... Oh, there we go. Should be able to cancel that one. KP looks to get involved when they set up for the arrow, so... Stalking his prey for a long duration enables the boys to come and to be kill. Second death of the game onto Trill's nature's prophet. And he retains the Echo Salami as well, so he's going to be very, very happy about that. Still, of course, uh, having to be cautious whenever you go for these super deep dives, but again, I really don't feel like Lil Gunfil they uh, have the need to. Double, well, let's call it triple Midas. And, uh, you know, reasonably good scaling lineup as well yeah dude I, the more i look at it i'm like i don't know this is really scary like late game these supports can make a lot of plays to help initiate timber can even look to you can definitely have great ways to deal with nanaga illusions you can even hex to help deal with that initial jump onto the queen of pain them off to a great start. Uh, what can Fnatic look to do to kind of slow down the game that Logan is starting to to build up to? Oh, I was gonna say play around KP a little bit more. Have a look at his item build though. Is, this is, is he still going for us? Bottom lane. I'm yeah, four stuff. Yeah. Four stuff. Arcane boots. Double wraith ban. So he he went the arcane boots l yesterday when he was playing the razor. Uh, arcane into the disassemble. disassemble I cannot yeah. remember. He, I think he did go Wraith Man. I can't remember if he went multiple or not, though. But look, it's a pretty good force game. Regardless, it's just a question of like when does his item fit in? And do you feel like the Razor is the one that should be buying it? Yeah. So I feel like his big strength is you know you reach this timing a decent amount earlier than uh, let's say most of the heroes on Little Gun's side, and he's just ignored that. So uh, realistically, the only one that would have been able to respond effectively to you is the Timber Saw. But even with the timber, right, you think about the the Aghanim shard for the razor. Just have a look at what it actually reads as, actually. Hold on. I've got a smoke coming through. They're doing uh, the scans on the mark as well. Fnatic. They I just mean, picked up the Aghanim shard. DJ Ward's going to be laid down, but oh, they don't get a glimpse of Trill. The tree is just blocking out the vision, so the Nature's Prophet will narrowly escape. They might look for the easy kill onto Ace, however. Eleven's going to instantly try and TP in. Now, he won't be able to keep the Tiny alive, but they could easily turn it onto KP. Before Staff, over the Fissure Ward, they need an angle for the hook shot, and the Creeps will block that one, but Eleven's not done just yet. Continuing on on forward for more. Need the stuns to hold them down, and they won't find any. Actually, Eleven, almost getting genuine. Goes for the Blind Whirling Death. 
Think of the damage. Fissure into the arrow. The blink over the wall as well. Sonic wave to blow him up. But 11, he's still alive. Hood, and he's chilling. I was thinking, could DJ be the greatest gamer I've ever seen and just use that echo slam as he's coming in with the timber chain? But oh, unfortunately, even the great Dejanel isn't enough to be able to... Jarnel? Jardel? I forget what his actual name is, but it starts with DJ. And uh, yeah, he just wasn't on point just that time. But again, showing that there, there's hope. It was a good usage of the four staff coming through from KP. I really want to see the scaling start to happen. Going into the BKB next. Okay, I, I respect that. It means that you won't need to worry about the tiny or the razor or the clockwork at all in these team fights. Really only needing to give a little bit more emphasis over to that nature's profit. And I'm not my big trouble bottom lane. First on the chain control has to be perfect. The cogs to push him back. 423 is going to be here to provide the damage. And Trill, what a great TP location as well. Just anticipating where he was going to escape to. The Fnatic, they're Trying moving the down. Retreat. They're going to see Trill. They see him with the ward. Can't block him off though. Ooh, Fijot sets up for the arrows. He'll go down. But they are really far into Dyer's territory. Can they be able to clean up now? Eleven's going to look vision. to try and TP in. KP and DJ to the northern side. Even the rocket flare will scout out KP. Eleven's going to go for the easy kill onto DJ, however. So the Earthshaker will not be able to escape. KP, however, will have a different fate. All right, so the first 10 or so minutes of the game weren't looking too great for Gabby, but he's climbing. He is getting that net worth that he needs and going into the Orchid this time around. So if you think about ways to be able to find those key pickoffs, particularly I would say onto the Arc Warden, that's really what you're looking for because it's still not going to be a case where you can kill Eleven on his Timber Saw, right? The, uh, the Hood of Defiance, the Lotus Orb, that's going to completely nullify all of this magic damage that, well, all this limited magic damage that you've got on Fnatic to try and take care of him. I, this vessel is the real big question mark for, for me right now on Fnatic. If they can actually get a couple kills in a row on the Timber and kind of slow down his game, because he, with this Kyer, is going a bit more into that greedy route. Like, he, he wants the damage. He wants to try and scale. But if they can kill him a couple times, then all of a sudden you kind of slow down his game. You don't get towards that next maybe, like, defensive item and could really start to snowball out of control. So it's just a question of can they get something out of this. I'd like to see them smoke and try and bring him down as soon as this is completed. Mid lane, actually. Ace. Jump on a KP, but not clean with the initiation. I mean, in theory, it makes a lot of sense, right? The Spirit Vessel. But again, you're up against this Lotus Orb. So how are you actually going to take these team fights is probably the big question that uh, Fnatic are asking themselves. You know, do we do we initiate with an ensnare? And K then hope KP might be in trouble. Him. It's going to be able to blink over the top. Tosses him over to Seb, but they don't get him locked inside the cogs. They're very hesitant about taking a fight here. Trill yet to show up. And they'll lose the clockwork as a result of this. Eleven's going to join the party now. Tries to free up the pathing for the Timber Chain. And now Ace, he's also caught out DJ off of the left side as well. So even though they lose the clockwork, multiple members of Fnatic are going to go down. And the song doesn't even save them at all. It'll set up for the arrow, but they haven't been able to retreat with the song now. So they're going to be cautious. Orchid's going to slow down Ace. They'll be able to purge it up. But Armel's in with a Sonic Wave that nets them the kill onto one onto one though and it's just a support so is it really worth it at the end of the day now the uh the timber source still has nothing that he needs to be worried about he could just stand here on the front lines deal with the naga illusion push a little bit further you can see armel despite the fact that in the laning stage he went those three points in the shadow strike to try and slow down that arc warden he has gone a lot more into the selfish mode he needs to make sure that he is also a legitimate core capable of dealing this 11? consistent damage can they punish him? He's incredibly deep. Sure, we'll TP. The boys are coming. They're coming, man. I don't know, Fnatic. Is this the fight you really want to take? Yeah. He'll land the hook shot. KP once again put in the grave and 11. He's so farmed. How do they stop him? Chain on forward. Maybe the fissure is the way they can hold him back, but Ace, he'll jump on over. Gets the combo out, but the damage, it's not enough through the stun lock. So Junyuel will at least be able to leap away, but now the tower is vulnerable. Really does feel like without that Sonic Wave, Eleven's just not afraid at all. And ever since Armel used it to get the kill onto Ace in that previous fight, he just hasn't left this small area near between the tier two bot and mid. Why would he? 
He's got that internal timer going on. I'm sure he's saying, did anyone catch the time when, when that was last used? Because that's all I'm really afraid of. Just in that time, Armel. He's been able to keep that top lane pushed. Means that this movement might be scouted out a little bit more easily. And so Gabby, he's going to make his retreat. Just using the illusions right now to keep the lanes pushed in, but playing under the safety of his own tier 2 tower. At least until some heroes reveal back onto the map. So good awareness coming through from Gabby, but gotta keep playing on the edge. They... They're, they're about to get some items here, though, on Fnatic. Uh, let's see. Let's see what they can do. Like, uh, you just got the BKB on the Queen Shaker. of Pain. Yep, Blink Dagger Shaker, Spirit Vessel completed. It, it, this you really need because this is probably the biggest spike they're going to have for the next couple of minutes if they aren't able to win this fight then the map is it's going to be completely little guns as well we're going to see them get the jump ace onto kp starting to seal some damage armel to the middle they should be able to bring down the tiny to start the team fight gonna be cautious how long they stick around though armel use a very early bkb so do you want to take a long drawn out fight there's a hook shot's gonna land, but the damage it's not there at the moment. So Armel, he'll blink down to the left side, but 11 still on hot pursuit. A defensive use of the Sonic Wave will buy him enough time to get the blink back to the high ground. I mean, DJ's still waiting around with that blink dagger available. They would have seen the fresh use of the Observer Ward as well. Stops the TP. But I'm not sure if 11 even wants to leave. I mean, it might have just been a thing of, well, I want to get my uh, my items a little bit sooner. Who cares about waiting for the courier? is another one of those fights that despite some great usage of the Fisher, we don't see the impact of the Echo Slam just yet coming through from DJ. They're not clumping up on Lil Gun. This is what I was talking about, right? You can get all of these items in in uh, conjunction with each other, but how are you going to actually execute it? Like, what mm. is your target? Because you have to deal with Eleven. He is just going to completely take over these team fights if you don't, but it's either force him to use the Lotus Orb super early on, and then try and use the Spirit Vessel, or you need to be absolutely perfect with your CP. And they don't have the greatest amount of that. KP's in trouble. Set with the hookshot, chill with the TP. Easy kill for them to find across the map. Thought they were trying to they set up on really 11. On 11. I don't know, Fissure. Chain control, no. No, not enough. It ain't happening. So that is honestly how I think they get the start onto 11. It needs to be Fissure into Arrow that, of course, they need to execute it. But then what? Then <laughs> then that control might be long enough for a little bit, at least like three seconds of Spirit Vessel, and potentially that's enough damage, I think, if Nargis nearby. Maybe. I, I can't see another way. I cannot <laughs> see another way. Like, I'm really I grasping at straws. Enough, I still don't think that's enough. So does Gabby ever reach a critical threshold then? Like, this Naga is getting so much farm, but... Is is he going to be able to do much with this farm? That's really the question right now. Maybe... Is there anyone that can buy a Silver Edge or something? Just because I'm also thinking the Naga Saren, yeah, you can get him and all of his illusions hitting, but that's just going to build up the reactive armor stacks as well. So is that going to be enough to be able to take him out? I'm not sure. They might get Trill. Look at the invasion That's to the jungle. Option. Should be able to set this one up perfectly. Fissure into the arrow. And they'll even drop the Echo Slam for good measure. But Dyer, they've come down to take the party. Says him with a hook shot once again as Gabby tries to get the song off. But to no hope. They cancelled it with the mini proc of the battery salt. And that's why Seth gets the tip. Oh, for sure. Like, he has just always been in the right place at the right time, Seth, this game. And... And again, there's these Mongolian boys, you know, you take a couple of them out and very, very easy to just slot them in, constantly scrimming with each other. So they made a really nice name for himself as well, playing on uh, Neon over the past year and well, he's showing up so far. I mean, we've given him a few MVP votes so far from his uh, performances throughout the latest stage of the groups. Interesting toss to the creeps. 4 2 3 is trying to close the distance. I've got the Gleep near to kind of stall him out. Are they going to continue to hunt him, though? Ace has got Blink. Looks like they're setting up on Armel, actually, mid lane. Not enough to be able to get him. So back to top we go, as Ace is going to be in once again. Oh, maybe Arrow, not. maybe they actually get the kill onto Trill. He's going to be able to play him around with the BKB, but Armel will actually blow him up. Sonic Wave cuts away the life of the Nature's Prophet, but hang on. How long do you want to stick around? Because a big bad Timber Saw is ready to fight. In goes Eleven, but KP's out. Fissure to hold him down, and now they've got Gabby as well. Timber's starting to fall low. We won't have a way to get rid of the vessel, and finally, they get Eleven, and they might be able to get more as well. Seth, 
into the tree line for the TP will be successful. So Lil Gun lose two, and they'll even lose more as well as DJ blinks over, gets the fissure. Finally, some signs of life for Fnatic as Armel gets the triple, and they might look for Roche now. You have to wonder how much of that is actually planned, what Fnatic just did, and how much of it is just good luck, because to me, that was the, the classic KP play, where he just puts himself out there. He's, you know, pretty tanky. He's constantly staying in this strength fan brace form, despite being the agi hero on the Razor. He's got his four stuff. He's, uh, you know, just playing that little bit mm, more selfish, Hang on, you little. know? It... Oh, does he go for this? No, nah, I don't think he can afford it. Do it. He's oh. going to do it. He's going to do it! Wait, someone forced oh. him out on KP! Oh my god, KP! <laughs> Clever, clever. All right, he's still got the quick fingers. But yeah, like you can see KP even just going for the 14 strength, right? Instead of the the static link steal. I mean, there are some pretty decent targets to be able to lock in onto the Arc Ward and the Nature's Prophet. They're fairly uh, static heroes, especially considering you've got the four staff, but he is just acting as the bait right now as this Razor. And that is one way for the Timber to die, right? Dive. 2v5 underneath the uh, enemy's tier 2 tower with no way for your teammates to help you. It still isn't the, the level of the game where you can just look to solo out this game. Are they baiting Armel? Looks like they are. Got the supports playing behind him. DJ is ready to rock and roll with the Echo Slam if he finds the opening, but it's not required for the kill onto Ser. They're going to be able to chase him down. Armel... We'll have to use his BKB, however, but they're unable to bring down the ages. So, Fnatic, only a thousand deficit now. They're starting to build some momentum. This game is looking a bit scary all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, any time. And this has been with pretty minor impacts coming through from the Naga Zone, right? Like, the Orchid is basically it. The, the damage hasn't been coming through off of the back of Gabby. It's been vast majority from Armel, who has done a great job of being able to scale himself, sitting third on net worth, on the uh, the Kyren Sanj, really that brawling style, but not giving up his damage uh, for the sake of frontlining. I think an issue that we're going to start to see now, which I hold that thought actually smoke up from the guns. Tower's already gone down, so they're going to be too late. Look at the ward on the cliff, the jetpack as well, to try and give them the flying vision. No one's getting scouted at the moment. No guard, Armel, that'd be a pretty big deal, though, but they're just not quite in a position to be able to fully connect with the whole team. Nice scan. Gets him out. They avoid the gank. And now this is huge because Armel's also going to be able to shove out bottom. So if they shove out bot, shove out mid, they could look to make their own play on Fnatic. You still got the ages for 2 minutes 30. Mm -hmm. Just wanting to open up the map to be able to play around as well. Securing the uh, the outpost there on Armel. He's got the Aegis, so he can afford to make a, a little bit more ballsy plays like that, especially considering, like we've been saying, the BKB, the Kyren Sanj. Very, very hard to take him down at this stage. Might change back in uh, in Lil Gun's favor once Trill hits up onto that level 20, though, right? Like, you, you won't have that, uh, that blink potential on Armel to be able to get out of the Sprout if that's the way that Trill chooses the talent. So it might require... You, you'll probably get one successful team fight off the back of it, but then it'll just mean playing around that four staff even further. Oh, the Tempest double is going to be fed. What a god's been given over. Wait, this ward's great. Fnatic's here. They're going to see Ace as well. They won't actually be able to use it, however, this time. They but the smoke, though. That's a lot of information for them to play with. Do they want to get set up on the high ground? They ended up linking backwards, just trying to go the full wrap around, avoiding anyone that might be standing on that high ground. So we'll reveal that no one's there right now, but Gabby would be a great target. That he would. Let's see if they can get the opening on Ser. Needs to line up the hook shot perfectly. The rest of the team are ready to follow in pursuit. They've got the damage required. It's a question of can they get the opening? It's going to be the Tempest double to start. Trying to force some reactions out, but KP is going to be able to spot out the initiators. Looking to try and stop the Blink Daggers. Fijot setting up for the arrow. The Clockwork down to half. They're going to be able to secure the kill in the end. And Armel even jumps over the tree line to try and get the finishing blow onto 4-2-3. But a TP out will keep him alive. So in the end, just the Clockwork going down for a couple BKB usages. 
Uh, maybe 11 going down. He's got the Lotus Orb if required. Avalanche to disrupt the combo at the moment. And a Gleep need to get them out safety, so 11's okay. They go in. 11's in. In. Fissure. He's got the Vestal on him. Do they have the damage? Oh, that's the question. It looks like they do. Sonic Wave and buy 11. Very, very odd choices to go back into where you know the enemy team has the vision. You know that they've got their Spirit Vessel with charges to be able to play around. This would be a nice kill if they're able to claim it onto DJ, but if you're just going to use the Acro Slam, does he get away from this? I should die to the Flux. Boys to stand on him and KP nearly, nearly able to save him from that Flux, but yeah, Ace with his tree grab, tree throw rather, able to bring it away. Uh, the one thing that really stood out to me in that fight wasn't actually in the fight. I mean, Trill was standing right outside of the tier three tower, just watching, waiting for his moment to be able to come into that engagement. The thing that separates the, the good nature's profit players from the great ones is that if that's Palos, he's pushing down a tier two while all that's happening, creating so much Set. more chaos. Gets the hook shot. Ace to follow, but a four star will disrupt the toss back potential, so and how to get another freebie. The lanes are really starting to be a big issue for Luga. And again, we mentioned that really it's only the Timbersaw that's able to address this Nargus Iron. Mm -hmm. and this is another adds another layer to what I was talking about before with Trill, right? Like if if he's actually pushing out that lane while looking for the opportunity to TP in then maybe it's a different story. Maybe someone TPs back. Maybe even if you don't and you lose that fight, you get a tier two tower. You set up for the next Roche. It's those little things that the great uh, Nature's Prophet players do that really sets them apart. They should know this movement's happening though. Sonic Wave, not Sonic Wave, Scream of Pain, used under the cover of smoke to be able to clear that one out. So Ace is going to be standing in where he thinks is safety. But he's actually going to get scouted out by this Observer Ward still placed there by Jow. Eleven's really far away from the team. They look to get the start. Lotus Orb's going to be provided for this arrow from afar. Now they won't have a way to get rid of the Spirit Vessel. They can't hold Eleven into place, though. Trill's the actually going to TP in aggressively, but the leash, they weren't ready for it. Now it's Double on plus. Gabby's back to turn the team fight around. He's going to move into the middle, protected with the BKB for the moment. KP even trying to move into the middle as well as Dyer retreating back to their high ground, and they will be able to make it out successfully. Now, do they want to counter back? Reevaluating the team fight as Ace finds the opening with a toss, but they're hesitant to move in until 11. Finds the opening, but the damage isn't there. Gabby, song into the TP up, but the Gleepni holds Gabby down. And how do you escape now? The boys didn't stick around, but they'll just sacrifice Gabby's life and hope they'll all make it away. KP, though, can he even? Or even the rest of the boys, they're coming. Ace's got Blink in five. Gleepnir's gonna hold one member down. So DJ in the lane. The Tempest double should be able to deal with the Earthshaker. Meanwhile, Eleven can just target down Janya Wells, Marana as four members from Fnatic get wiped from the face of the earth. There's what a fight for Lil Gun. Oh, they just completely cleaned them up. They stayed a little bit too long. Armel getting caught out there. That was the catalyst, right? Team fights feel so different if he's there with that sustained damage coming through. The Scream of Pain kind of causing them to have to back up a little bit, but this time around, even without the... Uh, I kind of want to see him go into that new Aghanims, uh, just for that... Oh, sorry, not the new Aghanims, the, uh, the Aghanim Shard. Just because the silence feels like it could make that big difference in providing a little bit of that extra lockdown against the Timbersaur in particular. Yeah, and speaking about the Timber, this is the fine line that you play on this hero. Sometimes it's a bit too far, but sometimes it's perfectly calculated where you get them to dive, you, you just stay alive long enough where they overstep the boundary and then you and then you capitalize on it. and that's exactly what they did and now Lil Gun, such a huge swing not only in the net worth but the experience as well and now they've been able to address the lane issues every lane completely in their favor so they can look to make another play shortly if they would like to they are very close to some items though I mean they got a BKB now on the timber source so who cares about spirit vessel who cares about the net who cares about all this stuff? He's going to be able to just shrug it off entirely. He's been able to get it really late into the game as well, 36 minutes. So he's going to get a lot of value out of this one. And what better time to do it than just before Roche is about to spawn? Let's work off from Fnatic. Let's see what they can get out of this. Do they have any vision to play with up top? This team fight potentially open them up for the pit. Look on in the river. 11 once again in the front line. I think they got a glimpse of Ace. Movement by Trill, though. 
moving down bottom, always wanting to keep that pressure on the lanes. He knows that Fnatic are playing around this Roche pit. It's just basically saying, don't commit too heavily, just the timber for now. He's already very hard to kill. BKB, so let me just influence the lanes a little bit, force some kind of bad movement mm, to come through. Roche is going down fast, time. man. Yeah. Did they ping this? Do they know this is happening? It might catch them off guard. It's about to go down. Arrow will scout, but... It... Oh, wow. I think that was just the, the Chakram and the Spark race spam. Yeah. Ended up giving the flamethrower over to Timber. So now you've got even more pushing power DJ available. jump in. Fissure only onto the clockwork at the moment. It's a great position to fight on the die side. You have this high ground and ward advantage. Okay, people will be able to deal with the vision. And Fnatic well aware that this is not a blockade they can pierce. A little surprised that Little Gun didn't choose to reinitiate there. I mean, they had uh, the Aegis available. They had a great little choke point for both Clockwork and Tiny to play around with. But they're valuing, they're respecting their opponents and wanting to wait for those BKBs to be back up and available for Timber and the Nature's Prophet. It also gives them now some time to get towards these tier 4 neutral items, so we'll see if there's any crazy ones picked up. Telescope's kind of nice. Not too many people that can hold it, unfortunately. Hmm? 423 is going to love the timeless relic. Oh, yeah. Even just the trickster cloak. I'm sure Clockwork would love to pick that one up. Make himself a little bit more... Difficult to take out in these team fights. Right now he's just roaming around on his jetpack. So what what is KP hoping to get out of this refresher of this game? The, the reason uh, why I ask is this is a again a very different Razer game and I the playstyle yes. is completely different. I guess it's just, again, that he's trying to be the bait. I, f I still feel like that's the most successful KP, uh, version of KP that we've seen, right? Playing his his Dooms, his Legion Commanders, his Omni Knights, and he's trying to make it work with the Razor as well, where you just get double use out of the BKB, double four stuff. Just little things like that that might not be the orthodox way to be able to play this, but... They're going to be cautious, man. Him. They're starting to bait the Tempest double. Sure, he's going to commit his TP onto the Earthshaker, but meanwhile, they'll turn their attention actually to RML and jump in and look at all the damage. RML blinks down to the left, but he won't be able to escape the Sonic Wave. Maybe he will actually. 11, can he get the damage and the Flamethrower oh, will linger? And in fact, it's the Rocket Flare from Se that finds him in the end. Very, very valuable kill to get onto Se as well. He's working towards his BKB. So again, he just wants to be able to be that annoying presence on the front lines. If he can lock on to DJ on that Earthshaker with the BKB pop, there's absolutely nothing the man can do about it. He's got a, a four staff to be able to follow him around. He's got the jetpack as well. And they're looking like they want to make some, uh, some aggressive movements happen as well. Overwhelming blink available for 423. Boots of travel, Tempest double available. Definitely look to try and at least force out a, a buyback if it's available, but at the very least a tier three. As you found, the Naga. That's gonna have to be a incredible echo for them to hold this. What was that? I'm... The blink by the tip where I thought that was the longest flicker I've ever seen in my life, but well, they. I don't think they've held them off entirely, no. It seems like it's still going to be. At least the melee rack's falling down in one lane. Flamethrower trying to deal with the remainder. Yeah, it should give them plenty of time to be able to retreat before our Mel's back up online. Right, for C on the bottom side. And this bottom lane's getting shoved out as well, so they are still in a position to completely occupy the map. Idy will actually get denied, so they're going to have this one to their advantage now, but... What's the call? We've seen them from Fnatic. They have been able to take a couple of successful fights, but the past couple of minutes hasn't gone their way at all. Something needs to look different in these engagements. And Mr. Oracle, what is that going to be? What do, what do we need to see out of Fnatic? I don't know, because it becomes even more difficult with the Nullifier picked up by Trill as well. So he's already got that Sprout Leash talent. If he gets that onto Armel, I'm not exactly sure how the interaction works with the Ogre Seal totem if Nullifier prevents mm. that flopping from happening, but uh, or, or even the, the Sprout Leash, right? But 
if that's able to get him to safety, that could be huge. If not, then he's in a rough spot. We've seen how these team fights look to turn out when Armel isn't a commanding presence in them. Great read from Fnatic, however. We'll be able to evade this smoke attempt. So they're going to get the lane shoved out. Uh, I think I just saw a tome given over to the Queen of Pain as well. So looking to try and get Armel closer towards the level 25. Uh, I also want to bring up the fact that Gabby, he had the Silver's Edge queued up for a while, uh, and then he, he went into the Scepter, so... We probably won't get a chance to talk about that as Fnatic. Scans on the mark, 11, see, pretty far forward, but the team's starting to connect. They go for the wraparound though, send the river, they're going to be able to scout up the clockwork. DJ get the jump, the Fissure holds him down for the moment. Should be an easy pick off for them to fire, but they're going to be cautious now because you are well and truly in Dyer's territory and they might be able to punish you for this. Gabby down to half health, he's going to be able to Take slip out to the left side. Fnatic can disengage. Maybe not KP. Hops a refresher, has another round of the BKP to play with. They're probably going to force it out of KP now. 11 straight on top in for the moment. Trill's even going to look to TP in as well as KP will escape it. Armel, he actually wants to jump in the middle. Armel feels like they're ready to take the team fight down to a third health. Now the Gleep near as well. But a defensive use of the BKP into the turnaround of the Sonic Wave. Armel is going to look oh, to combine with Gabby to run to bring down Tiny. But now 423 will show up. The Gleep near holds the Queen of Pain into place. And now the damage isn't there. It's up to Gabby once again. But they don't have the ways to control Lil Gun. Instantly retreating back to their side of the map as they'll escape, but Sam finds a hook shot, piercing the middle, and Ace is even better with the initiation. But Gabby, he'll be able to slow this one down. Long a song to there. retreat, but he won't get much distance away. A fissure to try to shop. They'll turn to the Marana initially, as Janya Well will still go down. But can some more valuable members escape as Gabby will just make it on the high ground? You could tell Ace wanted to go for that blink inside of the base, but they'll take this two-man advantage and they'll take multiple buybacks being used as well. You know 100% that Zhao is not going to be rejoining this one, so 5v4 going Little Gun's way. There's just something about these guys when they go up against Gabby and Armel that they're able to come out on top. A1 looking very heavily in their favor for right now. Multiple Lotus Orbs being able to save not only themselves, but their teammates too. What a, what a use of the global teleport there by Trill as well. Just found DJ, prevented that Echo Slam turnaround. Oh, and again, Eleven is committed incredibly deep, but no fear in the world. Are they going to be up against Mega Creeps if... I don't know how they're going to be able to come back from that. I don't think they will. There we go. The horn being sounded. Ooh, let's see if it's going to be a fast Roche spawn as well. Trill. Come on, send some trains, brother. Oh, just actually, just, yeah, use Ace. That's all right. Come on. What? No, stay. Stay, my friend. All right. <laughs> Two and a half minutes oh, on Roche. So. Plenty of time. Uh, so I feel Ooh. like we're getting to the stage where Little Gun might have this. <laughs> Next okay, game. Thank you. Thank, All right, thank I'm, you trying, I'm trying to keep it interesting. Uh, <laughs> what the next game, I, what I are you know trying to say? Hang on, hang on, hang on. What the hell are you trying to say? This game's not interesting? Are you saying the cost is interesting? What are you trying to say? Is it university? I'm trying to say that they probably should have it. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this arc ordered something that you have to deal yep. with? Or is it something that you, you specifically only want them to have second pick so that they don't get that protected pick at the end of um, the first phase to be able to pick it up? He'll be fine. I I can do you reckon they can first phase if they don't have eighth? I I don't. Know. No no that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think if if you if little gonna have first pick, I don't think you can leave Arc Warden in the pool anymore. You're gonna need to have to deal with a visage or something like that because uh, this is just proving to be way too useful. I mean, teams know how to play against visage. Some teams don't know how to play against Arc Warden just because they see it so relatively rarely. And 423 is proving that he is a formidable Arc Warden player. Mm -hmm. is... It was getting far. Oh, Lil Gunner honestly really looked at their best when, when he's on the Arc Warden, so. Yeah. Yep. I'd... <sighs> I do want to mention that Fnatic, they, they have itemized for blinks now. Like KP went blink, Gabby went blink. What, what are they. 
what are they looking to get out of this? Are they trying to jump the Nature's Prophet? Are yep. they trying to jump the Ark Warden? But <laughs> Nature's Prophet has right. to be. But again, they, I feel like they're lacking in stuns, right? Because if, he's already hard to kill. He's got a Titan Sliver, and he's got a freaking Satanic now as well, on top of everything else. Level 26. So he's going to start... Uh, he's actually already maxed out his attributes. So if your chain stun is not perfect, he's just going to Satanic and immediately get back to full. Mm. And all the while, you've got a Timber Saw that you haven't been able to CC, and he's just ripped through your entire mid lane. He's going to be fine. I was 4 two, 3 jumped in, but... uh. Not gonna even gonna use his micro is pretty solid, isn't it? Even yep. able to use the wind waker on his uh, tempest double, get it back to safety. They're just playing around this Roche, and they're gonna be the first ones to know of its presence as well. They've got good area control. Trill right now is the only one that Fnatic might have an idea of where he is, but it doesn't really matter. He can just TP into any single fight that he deems worthy. They're just stuck inside of their own base. I'm struggling to think of what they might be waiting for. It's three times now that they've tried to kill this Tempest double and three times that it's lived. So, maybe just hoping that this little bit of extra time is going to be enough that their buybacks are going to be back and available, but you still don't have one on the Shaker or the Marana. All three cores have it, but I don't know. Seems like a tall order to try and come back into this one for Fnatic. Last attempt. One more fight. And they choose fight. this time to be able to come out of the base when they're thinking, all right, maybe now they're going to be moving on forward. Just looking to pick up every little bit of farm that they can. I, I guess they're trying to catch Trill when he's farming back a little bit more defensively and they're actually pinged out exactly where he is. Really good map presence by DJ. Do they see him, though, underneath that Observer Ward? Oh, no. just expired as well. Just out of range. Oh, oh as he walks <laughs> into where it would have been, and now your base is getting sieged. It was a bit of a Hail Mary attempt. you got to admire it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to work out too well for him. And now you got to get back. Creeps inside the base, and soon to be KO... Uh, KP? He's right. Soon to be chaos. so with the Arc Ward and Tempest Double proving to be an issue. Eleven can just look to deal with the buffer buildings as well. Oh my god. Tempest Double just diving tier fours. Dude, I hate this hero with Wind Waker so much. Yeah. It's completely zoning out. Both supports. Gets Ele the reason. Oh! Eleven? How <laughs> deep, dude? What the hell? Alright. Yeah, looks pretty strong, eh? They're onto Armel as well. And they're poking and poking, and then all of a sudden, they might not be poking for too long. All of. Could have it just a hook shot randomly from afar. Regardless, it's just space. What do you do, man? Treant's inside. Mega creeps inside. Armel will try and find an opening. They found the real Arc Warden. Gabby's going to jump into the middle as well. And Snare to hold him down. 4-2-3 will get some distance away. But KP and Hot Pursuit, they'll be able to deal with the Arc Warden. If required, he can buy back and rejoin. But meanwhile, Armel hold down. Gleepney, no escape. He does have a buyback, but the base, it's falling too fast. Throne is now exposed. And Seth's going to be able to find the opening as well with a hook shot. Yeah, holding no, no. Naga into place. And there's no response. As Trill onto the objectives, he goes. Looking to try and cut oh. them off at the jugular. This creep should be able to do it. Maybe 11 will. Refresh your pop to try and get the flamethrower. Gabby was so the great. This song going. is not going to do it. Flames are still going through. Even the Ark Warden's going to buy back as well to try and get the throne as it will finally blow up. The G's are dropped and Lil Gun will take it 50 minutes in and what a game from them. What a performance. Yeah, uh, you, you got to deal with this Ark Warden. It was a great Timbersaw pick coming through from 11. Absolutely dominated that laning stage and yeah, it really felt like they they didn't take the opportunities that were presented to them on Fnatic. You know, we, we saw multiple times that there were big TPs used to the other side of the map. The towers were open for them to potentially open up more space for Gabby to farm, and they just never took it. And again, most of the time you're happy for the games to run late when you're up against a Naga Siren, not against three Midases. That's probably the exact opposite of what you've been wanting for, plus a free Timber Saw game, so on the other core that doesn't have the Midas. So uh, a really solid draft coming through from Little Gun, showing once again why they're such a thorn in the side of so many teams, not just in C, but around the world. Yep, and I mean, you mentioned it with uh, how scary this series was going to be considering the 
the history. A long ago history with how Lil Gun have shaped up versus the at least trio core of Fnatic and of course back then TNZ as well. They're going to need to try and find a, a different strategy heading into game two because also for them, this is something that they've had a lot of success on with uh, the Gabby Naga. Often they were kind of first phasing it in combination with the Disruptor early on through the group stages, but for this game, they just weren't able to find that success. Is Arc Warden such an issue? I think we just, we need to send a break. We need to see what we have next because like we mentioned, we're like, what, what's going to happen? Do you first phase it? If they have eight, because if they have eighth pick, you, you need to you need to first phase. Otherwise, they're going to look to pick it up. So, I'd ban Arc Warden and Brood if if they have first. If they have second, I think you can afford to let it through and then ban it second time around. Uh, well, we'll see. Really, a lot of it's going to come down to who has priority, who has that, of course, first pick, second pick, and what side both the teams are going to be on. But at least for Lugun, they're in the driver's seat here for our final elimination series of the night. A fanatic going to go home in a surprising position to a lot of the fans and a lot of the viewers. Well, we'll find out after the break.